Right now with this Canon EOS R6 mirrorless camera, I'm shooting with a three stop solid neutral density filter plus a diffusion mist filter. Though as you may notice, there's nothing here on the front of the lens. There's no adapter in between the RF lens and the camera body either. And the filters definitely aren't built into the R6. So where exactly are they? Well, they are here inside the camera body sitting in front of the sensor. This is a combined three stop solid ND with diffusion mist. That is part of a new line of magnetic clip-in filters made by Kalari Vision. In addition to this filter here, I also have three other uh, solid NDs with diffusion mist that were sent to me by Kalari. These include uh, three stop and six stop solid NDs with quarter strength diffusion mist and three stop and six stop solid NDs with one eighth diffusion mist. So in this review, I'm going to demonstrate for you how these filters work, how you put them in, how you take them out. We're also going to take a look at some example footage. Is there any color cast with these filters? How color accurate are they? And I'm also gonna share with you some of the pros and cons of using these magnetic clip-in filters to help you make a more informed purchasing decision. Okay, so here's how these filters work. First things first, you wanna make sure that you power off your camera and you wanna listen for this sound here. You hear that? That's the curtain closing in front of the digital sensor. So these clip-in filters are small, they're lightweight. There's a little tab down here at the bottom that uh, that you can hold on to. And then on the back of the filter and all these filters is a, a little circular magnetized bit here. And this is the little bit here that, uh, that sticks inside of the camera. And this is kind of like a post-it note, like it's uh, strong enough to stick, but not so strong that it's going to be difficult to remove or anything like that. Like it has uh, just enough strength to keep it in place. So let me show you how this works. So you just hold on to the tab at the bottom and then you just stick this into the interior like so and then you just drop it down and that's it. Now these filters are form fitted but there's a little bit of play here like a little bit of um, a little bit of affordance I think is what uh, a, an engineer would call it. The glass itself is larger than the sensor so even if this gets like a little twisted or a little off. Like it doesn't have to be perfectly square with the sensor. It can be, you know, it could be, uh, you know, just slightly tilted and it's not gonna make any difference because it is bigger than the sensor. As for taking it out, uh, Kalari provides a little uh, plastic key here that you can just insert into the, underneath the tab and lift up and then you can take the filter out like so. Now in practical use, I found, you know, you don't really need uh, the key. It's not like you have to unlock anything or anything like that. If you are holding the camera in your hand, because the magnet is not that strong, I mean, you can literally just do that. Just give it a good bump and, uh, and the filter will pop right out. And that's how they work. It's pretty simple. The filters come with a nice protective case, you know, hard shell uh, plastic case with a styrofoam interior, little cutouts here for uh, four filters. The only thing that's a little odd about the case is that if you have four filters and you fill all four slots, there's not really a convenient place to be putting the key. You can't really put the key underneath the filter because then the filter sticks up too high. Having some dedicated place to store the key would, you know, be nice. Maybe like a, an extra cutout up here, something like that. But uh, anyway, you know, as I demonstrated a second ago, you don't really have to have the key, but you know, just something to know in case you're curious. All right, so who are these filters for? Who would benefit most from using them and how are they different from other more traditional types of circular and square filters? Well, as for the latter, I mean, and some of you probably already figured this out by now, but you know, one of the key advantages of these clip-in filters is the fact that you don't have to worry about a uh, filter thread size. Like you don't have to carry around multiple filters of different, with different diameters for different lenses. You also don't have to carry around step up rings, you know, which is something that I know sometimes I get a little kind of OCD and a little paranoid about when I'm traveling because the last thing I want to do is lose a step up ring because then I wouldn't be able to use my uh, my filters, my circular filters, my uh, square filters. I wouldn't be able to use them on all the different lenses that you know, that I might have in my bag. And of course, the other key advantage is the fact that, you know, you can just throw a lens on or take it off, put another one on like this and keep shooting. You don't have to migrate your filters. You can just take a lens off, throw another one on and it doesn't matter what kind of lens you use. Like it could be an RF lens like this. It could be an EF lens. It could be a vintage lens. It could even be one of those ultra wide angle lenses, the kind that, you know, have that like, 
a bulbous glass out here on the front that typically requires some type of specialized hardware in order to be, you know, mounting filters onto the front of them. This just gets rid of all of that. This, this, you know, doesn't care like what lens you have attached. It could be anything, which of course is a pretty tantalizing proposition, I would bet for uh, some people out there who get concerned about mechanical vignette, especially if uh, you are like an ultra wide shooter and uh, because ultra wide angle lenses have a tendency to kind of pick up the edges of filters when they're mounted out here on the front. But by putting the filter back here in the back inside of the camera body, you don't have to worry about that at all. I mean, the only vignette you would then see in your shot would be just the natural optical vignette on the lens, which could be corrected later in post. <laughs> All right, but how color accurate are these filters? Are they going to contribute any color cast to your footage? What do they look like? Well, let's take a look at some examples. So good news here, these Kalari ND filters are very color accurate. There is little perceivable difference in color between an image created without an ND filter and with an ND filter. And in case you're not following along, this is exactly what you want out of an ND filter. All you want an ND filter to do is just darken the image. You just want it to bring down your exposure to reduce the amount of light that is entering the front of the lens so that you can shoot using a slower shutter speed. You don't want your colors to change because if you're shooting one minute without an ND and then, uh, and then shooting with an ND later, and then you have to match all that footage together, well, you don't want any color shifting uh, going on in your footage. So this is a very good thing. There is just a slight, uh, just a little extra saturation in the yellow and green. And the only reason why I know that is because I checked the scopes uh, using this color checker here, but it is you know, not the kind of thing that you can easily notice with the naked eye. Interestingly, the quarter strength diffusion mist NDs are about half a stop darker than their rated density. Perhaps it has something to do with uh, the extra diffusion that is uh, further reducing the amount of light entering the front of the lens. Not a big deal, but something you would need to pay attention to and remember when setting your exposure. So in general, I think these magnetized clip-in filters are an interesting option. I like how minimal and simple they are. The fact that you don't have to worry about step-up rings and they work well with other filters. So you could, you know, put a diffusion mist filter in here and an ND or a variable ND out here in the front without, of course, stacking up multiple filters out here in front of your camera lens and then introducing vignette in your shot, which can be especially problematic when shooting wide angle. Okay, but there is potentially a bigger issue with these uh, clip-in magnetic filters that I haven't talked about yet. And I say potentially because I'm not sure if everyone's going to care about this. I'm sure some of you may not care at all. Some of you may care a lot. Uh, you know, it kind of depends on who you are but let me show you what I'm talking about. So I noticed after using these filters for a while and testing them out and on both the, uh, the R5 and the R6, where they mount and where they stick uh, inside of the camera body up here, I'm looking at the monitor, see if you can see that. But up here inside of the camera body, there are some light uh, like abrasions. And I think what's happening here is that uh, Canon's most likely not using a scratch resistant finish on this, you know, little bit of hardware here inside the camera. Now, to be clear, this is a cosmetic thing. Like this is not harming the camera. It's not breaking the camera. It's not impacting the sensor. It's not, you know, it, it, that is not an issue and it's totally up to you. But for me, I was, uh, well, I wasn't very happy. I'll put it that way when I saw, you know, this up in here. So cosmetic issues aside, I mean, are these filters worth buying? Are they worth owning? Are they worth using? Will they be a valuable addition to your kit? Well, optically speaking, these ND filters are very color accurate. They do exactly what you want. They pull down the exposure of your shot. They darken the image without affecting color. And from a user experience perspective, I mean, I love the fact that, you know, you can just change lenses, change focal lengths whenever you want. You don't have to migrate filters from one lens to another. They're just always there. They're always inside the camera. There's something really minimal and just clean and simple about this that, that I like. And I like the fact that you can, you know, either use these filters on their own or combine them with other filters if you want to, you know, put some out here like a circular polarizer, a variable ND, like I was talking about earlier. So the main downsides that I see is just the fact that, you know, whenever you need to change a filter, it will require you to take the lens off and, you know, go in and, you know, make a change inside of here. Not necessarily, you know, more time consuming than changing a filter out here on the front, but it is just a little bit different. It's a different workflow. And then of course there is, 
you know, the fact that it is going to uh, cause a little bit of a um, little bit of abrasion, a little, you know, some marks inside of the camera. Hopefully at some point Canon will you know, change that and maybe put some kind of scratch resistant finish inside the camera body. I think that would be great. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. I hope I answered uh, your questions. If you were shopping for these and thinking about picking some up, please, uh, if you know, if I didn't answer your question, please feel free to leave a comment down below in the description. You can also reach out to me over at Instagram if you'd like to send me a DM over there. And of course, there is a link down below in the video description that you can use to uh, check out the full line of clip-in magnetic filters because there's uh, there's way more than you know what fits in this box here that uh, you can check out over at Kalari's website. If you and I are meeting for the first time, you've never been to my channel before, this is what I do every week. I make uh, videos about photography. Uh, whenever I have the chance, I get out in the field and do some landscape photography. I make videos from the field as well. And when I'm at home and when I'm in uh, this place here, I typically do product reviews, gear reviews, all that kind of stuff. So if this is uh, all in your wheelhouse and this is something of interest to you, remember to subscribe to this channel down below. And obviously give this video a thumbs up too. Uh, it would help me out. All right, thanks. See you next time.